Welcome to Kaiser and the Hondas YouTube podcast. Uh, I am Hanu, and I'm joined by Retro Kaiser. Good evening, folks. Yes. So this is the YouTube podcast where I read an Edgar Allan Poe story, and Kaiser makes sound effects and other funny noises with his mouth. Yep, I like to annoy the audience as much as I can. All right, and today is a special uh, podcast episode, um, which is a request from our very own Retro Kaiser. Um, Hi. Yes, uh, Kaiser requested, and it's the Mask of Red Death. Which is yep one of the one of the few um, post stories I've actually read in person. Yes, well you've read the you read the graphic novel. <laughs> yeah, a comic adaption of this. Mm. But yeah, this is one I, I, I vaguely remember this re reading this one in high school myself. This is a fairly well known post story. Um, mm. And as as always when we do these uh, podcasts, of course first we'll read the story. Uh, Kaiser will make funny sound effects. Um, we, we and with usually... all the stuff that goes on in this one, there's gonna, probably going to be a lot of raunchy sound effects. Well, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, the thing uh, I was about to say uh, is that usually we keep these introductions pretty light, so we don't... The thing is, we usually discuss the story, and also because Kaiser usually ha hasn't read the story, uh, we usually dis leave the discussion... Op uh, we, we, we go through the actual discussion of the story at the very end of the podcast. And that's actually something I wanted to say. I've done a little additional bonus video that I put up on my second channel. I'll probably have to link it uh, here. Is actually I edited together our uh, the conversation segments of or the discussion segments from our first six podcasts. Uh, nice. I took, yes, I took the, all those because sometimes it's kind of nice to just listen to those, especially if it's a very long story like the murders mm -hmm. in the Rue Morgue that was our longest episode. Um, you know, if, if you want Probably just... the best one, too. Well, yeah, I, I think I was a little tired towards the end of it, though. Like, it, it, <laughs> it, did take, it did take a bit of a toll on me, like, reading it out loud. But, um, yeah, I always like... I always enjoy uh, the discussions we have afterwards. And also because, you know, well, I have usually the kind of the history bits and things uh, related to the actual story. But then Kaiser usually has some pretty funny stuff he says. And I'm not sure if everybody, if everybody sticks around for that part of the podcast or the podcast. So if you oh, haven't... even starts it at all. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't uh, checked it out, uh, then I, I recommend checking out those uh, discussion sections that I... I, I did, do, I did, too. I did uh, uh, edit it together. I also did something last time, and uh, I, we will see if I keep it up with this one. So we've made these very no frills. So, like I said, the introductions are pretty short. We usually just jump, jump straight to the story. But last time, I actually added music to the podcast. Uh, I just had... I was in a mood to just put music at the start, but the first five episodes didn't have it. We just kind of jumped straight in. Uh, all right, but enough introductions. This, this has been quite a long introduction already. So let's now start with The Mask of Red Death. All right. The Red Death had long devastated the country. No pestilence had ever been so fatal or so hideous. Blood was its avatar and its seal. The redness and the horror of blood. <laughs> Oh, that was a seal. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, there were sharp pains and sudden dizziness. <laughs> and and then profuse bleeding at the pores with dissolution. <laughs> there it is again, dissolution, just like last time with M. Valdemar, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The scarlet stains upon the body, and especially upon the face of the victim, were the pest ban which shut him out from the... <laughs> that shut him out from the aid and from the sympathy of his fellow men. And, and the whole seizure, progress, and termination of the disease were the incidents of half an hour. All right. But the... Uh, that was a clock. The, yeah, so. yeah. But the Prince Prospero was happy and dauntless and... <laughs> there it is again. <laughs> Where that's a that's an old in joke. Like all the characters in the post stories will say hello exactly the same way. <laughs> but the Prince Prospero was happy and dauntless and sagacious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, when his dominions were half depopulated, he summoned his presence a thousand hail, a light-hearted and a light-hearted friends am uh, from among the knights and dames of his court. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's, it's the police officer from the Telltale Heart coming to, uh, to do a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> and with these retire to the deep seclusion of one of his castellated abbeys. Oh. What was that? No, oh, cast, castrated, Ellie. Castellated. Oh. <laughs> and, no, not Ali, Abby. Abby. Uh. <laughs> this was an extensive and magnificent structure. A cr the, cr <laughs> the creation of the prince's own eccentric yet August taste. August. I didn't know August was a. I thought that was a month. I didn't know that was a. That was a adjective. Huh. Unless it was. It's a, unless it's a reference to Augustus. Yeah, but I wonder what it means. August taste, huh? What right. season is it typically in August? Uh, it, it, da, well, up here in the northern hemisphere, it's a it's a fall month or a autumn month. But it, yeah, in Australia, probably that's early spring, isn't spring, it? Spring. Yeah. Yeah. A strong and lofty. Yeah. A strong and lofty wall girdled it in. This wall had gates of iron. <laughs> Need a little bit of oil. The courtiers, uh, sorry, the courtiers, having entered, brought furnaces and massy hammers. Bow, 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 bow. I don't know what the hell is a massy hammer. Wow. Okay. Must and, be a really big hammer. And welded bolts. They resolved. S yeah. <laughs> and they resolved to leave means neither of ingress nor egress to the sudden impulses of despair or of frenzy from within. The abbey was amply provisioned. With such precautions, the courtiers might bid defiance to contagion. I just realized this story is very topical right now with the pandemic and everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a fucking, uh, this is a fucking um, uh, quarantine horror story. The external, mm. <clears throat> the external world could take care of itself. In the meantime, it was folly to grieve or to think. The prince had provided all the appliances of pleasure. Mm. That's I'll a mark away. Get your mind out of the gun. <laughs> there were buffoons. There were impro <laughs> <laughs> buffoons, not baboons. <laughs> <laughs> there were improvisatori. The there were ballet dancers. There were da, 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 da. there were musicians. There was boom, 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 boom. There was beauty. There was wine. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, all these and security were within. Without was the red death. Um, I was toward. I was towards the close of the fifth or sixth month of his seclusion, and while the pestilence raged most furiously abroad, that the that the prince Prospero entertained his thousand friends at a masked ball of the most unusual magnificence. It was a voluptuous scene that masquerade. Uh, but first, let me tell you of the uh, let me tell of the rooms in which it was held. There were seven, an imperial suite. In many palaces, however, such suites form a long and straight vista, while the ho <clears throat> while the folding doors slide back nearly on the uh, to the walls on <laughs> on either hand, so that the view of of the whole extent is scarcely impeded. Here the case was very different, as might have been expected from the Duke's love of the bazaar. The apartments were so irregularly disposed that the vision embraced but little more than one at a time. There was a sharp turn at every, <coughs> at every twenty or thirty yards, and at each turn a novel effect. To the right and left, in the middle of each wall, a tall, narrow, gothic window looked up out upon a closed corridor which pursued the windings of the suite. Hmm. These windows were of stained glass, whose color varied in accordance to the prevailing hue of the decorations of the chamber into which it opened that at the eastern extremity was hung, for example, in blue, and vividly blue were its windows. The second chamber was purple in its ornaments and tapestries. Here the panes were purple, the third was green throughout, and so were the casements. The fourth was furnished and lighted with orange, the fifth and the fifth with white, the sixth with violet, the seventh apartment was uh, closely shrouded in black velvet tapestries that hung all over the ceilings and down the walls, falling in heavy folds upon a carpet uh, of the same material and hue. 
but in this chamber only the colour of the windows failed to correspond with the decorations. The panes were scarlet, a deep blood colour. Now, in no one of the seven apartments was there any lamp or candelabrum amid the profusion of golden ornaments that lay scattered to and fro or depended fr from the roof. I love the to and f this, I, I love it when, mm. whenever he, he, you know, Poe uses the words to and fro. It's really fun to say like that. <laughs> uh, there was no light of any kind emanating from the lamp or candle within the suite of chambers, but in... <sighs> But in the corridors that followed the suite there stood, opposite to each window, a heavy tripod bearing a brazier of fire. <laughs> ah, yeah! well, it's, uh, That's Madonna's I... That's Madonna screaming, by yeah. the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, well, B R A Z I E R. I, I might have I might have uh, said that wrong. Is it yeah, brazier, that's actually spelled with an S, isn't it? Yeah. So I don't know. Brazier. Oh, Brazier. <laughs> um, that projected its rays, uh, rays uh, through the tinted glass and so glaringly illuminated the room. And thus were, yeah. And thus were produced a multitude of gaudy and fantastic appearances. But in the western or black chamber, the effect of the firelight that streamed upon the dark hangings through the blood-tinted panes was ghastly in the extreme, and produced so wild a look upon the countenances of those who entered that there were a few of the company bold enough to set foot within its precincts at all. I can't step in there. I don't have any hair. <laughs> hair? <laughs> bold enough. Oh, oh. <laughs> but if they weren't that bald, was a pun. but if oh. they weren't bald enough, that, don't, don't you mean that they would have too much hair? Yeah, oh, whatever. I can't, <laughs> okay. I can't see past the shag of yeah. mine. Yeah, that, that, that was a dumb joke. Let's move on. It I know was, it is. <laughs> it was in this apartment also that there stood against the western wall a gigantic clock of ebony. Its pendulum swung to and fro with the dull, heavy, monotonous clang. Clang, clang, <laughs> clang, clang. And when the minute hand made the circuit of the face and the hour was to be stricken, there came from the brazen lungs of the clock a sound which was clear and loud and deep and exceedingly musical, but of so peculiar... Cuckoo! 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 <laughs> cuckoo! <laughs> but of so peculiar a note and emphasis that at each lapse of the hour, of an hour, the musician of the orchestra were constrained to pause momentarily in their performance to hearken to the sound, and thus the waltzers perform. Oh, oh, this, uh, whoa, that's a weird way to say that. Okay, and thus the waltzers perforce cease their evolutions. Perforce, not performance. That was the word I was expecting, and it said perforce instead. Wow. Okay, that was a. That's a funny way to say it. Sounds um, like a gang of wild cats. This is perforce. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess that's just like an uh, old out of use, uh, you know, uh, word for perform uh, or per and performance. Perforce. Okay. Uh, and there was a brief disconcert. Disconcert. Disconcert? All right. Uh, there was a brief disconcert of the whole gay company, and uh, while the chimes, <laughs> and while the chimes of the clock yet rang, it was observed that the giddiest grew pale. I was really hoping you would keep going with that cuckoo clock joke. That was really funny. <laughs> and the more, cuckoo, cuckoo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the more aged and sedate passed their hands over their brows, as if in confused reverie and or meditation. But when the echoes had fully ceased, a light laughter at once pervaded the assembly. <laughs> the musicians, uh, sorry, the musicians looked at each other and smiled as if at their own nervousness and folly, and made their whispering <laughs> and made their whispering bows, <clears throat> each to the <laughs> each to the other, uh, uh, that the next shiming of the clock. Cuckoo, cuckoo should produce in them no similar emotion, and then, after the lapse of the sixty minutes, uh, which embrace three thousand and six hundred seconds of the time that flies, wow, that was weird, uh, there came yet another shining of the clock. 
Oh, come on. No, no, no cuckoo clock. <laughs> cuckoo, cuckoo, <Yeah>. cuckoo. <laughs> and the, then were the same disconcert and tremo... Oh, sorry. So, yeah, uh, d d disconcert and tremulousness and meditation as before. Um... But in spite of these things, it was a gay and magnificent revel. I'm not doing that joke again. I'm already probably got enough hot water for doing that the first time. <laughs> no, I, I, that was a good one. I like that. Mm. The taste of the Duke were peculiar. <laughs> <laughs> he, had a fine, <laughs> he had a fine eye for colors and effects. I mean, they're, they're this pat's pretty fabulous. Ah, <laughs> look at all them colors and effects. Yes. He discarded the decora of, of mere fashion. His plans were bold and fiery, and his conceptions glowed with barbaric luster. There, mm -hmm. are... <laughs> <laughs> there are some who would have thought him mad. His followers... <laughs> nice. <laughs> There's more gay reverie for you. Uh, his followers felt that he was not. It was necessary to hear and see and touch him to be sure that he was not. Wow, okay. Yep, he's legit crazy. All right. He had directed in great part the movable embellishments of the seven Action! <laughs> Upon occasion of this great feat, and it was of his own guiding taste, uh, which had given character to the masquerades. Be sure they were grotesque. There were... <laughs> Uh, there, uh, there were much glare and glitter and piquen pip pique piquency, oh, piquency and phantasm. Much of Ooh. what, yes, much of what has been since seen as Hernani. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that means. Hungarian Leviosa. <laughs> Not Hermione. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the fucking runny gag of this episode that you keep mishearing words? Ah, <laughs> uh, there are there were arabesque figures with unsuited limbs and appointments. There were delirious fancies such as the madman fashions, such as the madman fashions. Huh? Is that... That's a that's a that's a fashion show I'm trying to picture. It's like now coming down the aisle. Look at the in season um straight jackets. Yeah, I, I read that awkwardly because I'm not sure if that is a verb like at, to fashion something. So or is it literally like the madman fashions? <laughs> the madman's fashion. Yeah, exactly. Is it a noun or is it a verb? Okay, whatever. We'll we're moving on. There were much of the beautiful, much of the wanton, much of the bizarre. Something of the terrible, and not a little of that which might have excited disgust. Ugh. To and fro, yes, there it is, that's my favorite <laughs> pair of words. To and fro in the seven chambers were stalked, in fact, a multitude of dreams, and these, the dreams. <sighs> <laughs> These, the dreams, writhed in and about, taking hue from the rooms and causing the wild music of the orchestra to seem as the echo of their steps. And anon, <laughs> and anon there strikes the ebony clock, which stands in the hall of the velvet. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I love that. that, that I, love, I love that that's what we went with. <laughs> And then, for a moment, all is still, all is silent, save the voice of the clock. Hello! I know! <laughs> Come on! Save for the cuckoo. voice of the clock! Cuckoo! Cuckoo! Yes! Cuckoo. Thank you! The dreams are still frozen as they stand. Good one. But the echoes of the shine die away, and they have endured. Cuckoo! 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 cuckoo. <laughs> and they have endured. But an instant and a light have subdued laughter floats after them as they depart. Uh... <laughs> okay, that sounded like something else. <laughs> <laughs> and now again the music swells, and the dreams live and writhe to and fro more merrily than ever, taking you from the many tinted windows through which stream the rays from the tripods. But to the chamber which lies most westwardly of the seven, there are now none of the maskers who venture, for the night is waning away, and there flows a ruddier light through the blood-coloured panes, and the blackness of the sable drapery appeals, appalls. 
I remember in a previous story we talk about the sable draperies, <laughs> like in a, in a sexual sense. <laughs> oh, my like draperies! Sable treachery. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that was the last episode, wasn't it? No, 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 no not the last. I think it no. was. It, it was either oval portrait or um or uh, Berenice, the second one, the second episode. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, at least I think it's been long enough that even I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> okay, let's let's keep going. And to him whose foot falls upon the sable carpet. Ah! <laughs> there comes from the near clock of ebony a muffled peal, more suddenly. That was a muffled cuckoo. Uh, yeah. More sullenly emphatic than any which reaches their ears who indulge in the more remote gaieties of the other apartments. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that, you know, gay in this time age just meant something like, like you know, uh, happiness. and the It also doesn't help that this is like a rainbow um, castle to yeah. all the lights shining. Yeah, exactly. It, it gives the whole story a completely new meaning, doesn't it? <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, yeah. It's the same as when they, you know, the characters ejaculate in these stories. Like, it, it's always <laughs> like, you know, they mean something else, but it, it will never stop being funny. Okay. Moving on. <clears throat> but there it... Ah, but these other apartments were densely crowded in, and them beat feverishly the heart of life. Boom, 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 boom. The, the rebel went world, whoa, whirlingly. That's a difficult word. Whirling, <laughs> whirlingly on until at length there commenced the sounding of midnight upon the clock. Cuckoo. And then the music ceased, as I have told. The evolutions of the waltzers were quieted, and these were... Mm, sorry. There was an uneasy cessation of all things as before, but now there were twelve sto uh, strokes to be sounded by the bell of the clock, and thus it happened. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to make it that dramatic. I was actually running out of breath. <laughs> and thus it happened. Perhaps that more of thought crept with more with more of time into the medi medi sorry into the meditations of the thoughtful among those who reveled thus too it happened perhaps that before the last echoes of the last shime had utterly sunk into silence there were many individuals in the crowd who had found leisure to become aware of the presence of a masked figure which had arrested hello <laughs> A masked figure which had arrested the attention of no single individual before, and the Oi, what's going on here? And the rumor of this new presence having spread itself whisperingly around, these arose the length from the whole company a buzz or Zzz. or murmur, <laughs> expressive of disprobo whoa disapprobation disapprobation and surprise. Oh. Then finally, of terror, of horror, ah. and of disgust. <laughs> in an assembly of phantasms such as I have painted, it may well be supposed that no ordinary appearance could have excited such sensation. In truth, the masquerade, uh, the masquerade license of the night was nearly unlimited, but the figure in question had outheroded Herod and gone beyond the bounds of even the prince's infinite decorum. In, oh, sorry, indefinite decorum. Sorry, I, I read that wrong. There are chords in the heart of most reckless, which cannot be touched without emotion, even with the utterly lost, to whom life and death are equally jests. There are matters of which no jest can be made. The whole company, indeed, seem now deeply to feel that in the costume and bearing of the stranger, neither wit nor propriety existed. Propriety? Ah, huh. okay, that's interesting. What does, wait a minute, propriety, that means to, like, ownership, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. It always comes to mind when we talk about, like, proprietary chords for, like, video game consoles. That's why, that's the first word that comes to mind. All right. Mm. The figure was tall and gaunt and shrouded, <laughs> and shrouded from head to foot in the habiliments of the grave. The mask which concealed the visage was made so nearly to resemble the countenance of a stiffened corpse that the closest... <gasps> That this <laughs> is that 
Is that a corpse stiffening? <laughs> yeah. By something stiffening, I'll tell you. <laughs> All right. By stiffening, I guess. Oh boy, that that the closest scrutiny must have had difficulty in detecting the cheat, and yet. Yes, all right, I was expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, all this might have been endured, if not approved by the mad revelers around, but the mummer, the mummer, oh, oh yeah, mummer, okay, but the mummer had gone so far as to assume the type, uh, the type of the Red Death. His vedger was dabbled in blood. Ew. Oh, no, dab oh, no dabbling sound effects. <laughs> A dab... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Oh, this isn't okay, a video okay, that was tall. You can't sorry. see me dab right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, that was a tall order. Uh, and his broad brow, uh, with all the features of the face, was be was besprinkled with the scarlet horror. The eyes. Sounds like an ice cream now. <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of sprinkles. <laughs> When the eyes of Prince Prospero fell upon the spectral image, which... With, what was that? <laughs> Falling eyes. Oh, okay. Uh, which, with the slow and solemn movement, is, if more fully to sustain the role, stalked to and fro among the waltzers. He was seen to be convulsed in the first moment with the strong shudder either of terror or distaste. <laughs> You know what, you sound like that home improvement guy. <laughs> uh? Yeah, what, what's his name? I forgot. Tim Allen. Tim Allen, yeah, all right. But in the next, his brow reddened with rage. Who dares, he demanded hoarsely uh, of the courtiers. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Ugh, yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm not sick, I'm just a little horse, all right. He demanded hoarsely uh, of the courtiers who stood near him, Who dares insult us with this blasphemous mockery? Seize him and m unmask him, that we may n know whom we have to hang at sunrise from the battlements. Well, that it's went... old man Jenkins! I would have gone away with it too if it wasn't for you meddling kids. <laughs> yeah, that went from 1 to 11 real quick. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Not all of them can be winners. Yeah, no, 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 but that's like, you know, the guy guy immediately wants to hang this hang mm. him. It was in the eastern and uh, it was in the eastern or blue chamber in which stood the pr uh, the Prince Prospero as he uttered these words. They rang throughout the seven rooms loudly and clearly, for the prince was a bold and robust man, and the music had become hushed at the waving of his hand. Uh, it was in the blue room where stood the prince with a group of pale courtiers by his side. At first, as he spoke, there was a slight rushing movement of this group in the direction of the intruder, who at the moment was also near at hand, and now, with deliberate and stately step, made closer approach to the speaker, but from a certain nameless awe with which the mad assumptions of the mummer had inspired the whole party, there were found none who put forth hand to seize him, so that unimpeded he passed within a yard of the prince's person, and while the vast assembly, as if with one impulse, shrank from the centers of the room to the walls. <laughs> Was that then shrinking? <laughs> yep. He made his way uninterruptedly, but with the same solemn and measured step which had dis <coughs> distinguished him from the first, uh, through the blue chamber to the purple, through the purple to the green, through the green to the orange, through this again to the white, and even thence to the violet. Ere a decided movement had been made to arrest him. It was then, however, that the Prince Prospero, maddening with rage and the, and the shame of his own momentary cowardice, rushed hurriedly through the six chambers while none followed him on account of a deadly terror that had seized upon all. He bore aloft a drawn dagger and, <laughs> yes, and had approached in rapid impetuosity. Impetuous. <laughs> Rabbit impetuos impetuosity, that is a difficult word to say, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, to within three or four feet of the retreating figure, uh, when the latter, having attained the extremity of the velvet apartment, turned suddenly and confronted his pursuer, there was a sharp cry. <laughs> well, no, that's not what they meant, but okay. <laughs> like, a, like a yell, that's what they meant. Ah! 
And the dagger dropped gleaming upon the sable carpet, upon which instantly afterwards fell prostrate in death the Prince Prospero. <coughs> oh, Gwimey, I've cocked it. Blech. Then summoning the wild courage of despair, a throng of revelers at once threw themselves into the black apartment, and seizing the mummer, <laughs> and seizing the mummer, whose tall figure stood erect and motionless within the shadow, the jail, mama. <laughs> uh, uh, stood erect and motionless. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> motionless within the shadow of the ebony clock, gasped in. Okay. In unutterable horror at finding the grave se um, cerements and corpse-like mask which they handled, <clears throat> <laughs> which they handled with so violent a rudeness, un untenanted by any tangible form, and not and now was acknowledged the presence of the Red Death. He had come like a thief in the night. All right. And he had come like a thief in the night, and one by one dropped the revelers in the blood be uh, bedewed halls of their revel, and died each in the despairing posture of his fall. And the life of the ebony clock went out with that of the last of the gay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was... Oh, God, yeah. Uh, and the flames of the tripods expired, and, da <sighs> and darkness and decay, and the Red Death held illimitable dominion over all. The <laughs> end. <laughs> yes, that was the Mask of Red Death. So how did you feel about that story? That was a lot more flowery compared to the comic book version I read. <laughs> All right, how was the comic book version different then? Can you um just practically it's pretty much the same, just a lot shortened to where it's, it's more like um you know more abridged. So it's just a lot shorter, but basically the same happened. Yeah, and uh, have you ever seen have you ever seen uh, any of those? There's, there's, this is actually like I said, this is one of the better known post stories, and there's actually many like um well, there's that comic book you said, but there are actually many like illustrations of the story. So uh, hmm. I, I wonder, have you ever ever seen any of the illustrations of the Red Death? Um, the only one I saw was from that comic book, and it it looked like a figure dressed in entirely in red, but it had like this weird like um skull mask, like like yeah. a deer skull mask. Oh yeah, yeah. Like basically looked like death. Yeah, there were there are li lo a lot of them do follow that base same basic trend of the. Uh, of uh, of it been draped in like a cowl or um uh, or like a you know a, a robe and then you know some kind of a some kind of a like a disturbing mask and thing. It's funny because I was looking up a little bit of research on this story because um, in preparation because uh, I mean I kind of knew what what it was sort of about but uh, it was um, but I had forgotten a little bit. And there's re this really funny illustration. I don't know if it's supposed to be the Red Death or if it's one it supposed to be one of like Prospero's guests. But there's like a topless woman in one of the illustrations. It was really funny. Like, okay, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> yeah. The funny thing is, when I, I sort of think about illustrations of the story, the first thing that comes to mind is the al the Iron Maiden album cover, Dance of Death. Oh yeah, that's that's another thing. Like I w that's the thing that I was also beginning to think about. Like maybe that was maybe that was the inspiration because you know Iron Maiden do have a lot of like classic. Um, story influences and they of course like we've mentioned before they have a song called uh, murders in the room morgue which of course unfortunately mm -hmm. doesn't have anything to do with the short story though they just borrowed the title because you know it's a good title um okay so uh there's obviously like this is kind of one of those this is again it's it's prince prospero uh and it doesn't like give but it doesn't like give any like definitive um location to the story so this is kind of a little bit like Hop frog again that this is like in some weird fairy tale kingdom taking place this entire story sort of some sort of fictional kingdom so it's a little abstract uh in that sense mm. there, there's just this weird figure that suddenly shows up and everybody starts dropping dead so oh, dude, that's what, what you... i was thinking too when i read it. i was thinking it's like part of like the hop frog um universe yeah so so obviously this is main, mainly intended to be maybe like a bit of an allegory. So what do you think this Red Death is supposed to stand for? I want to hear your thoughts before I tell what... I was, I was thinking a bit biblical. I was thinking like represented like Sodom and Gomorrah in a sense. 
Yeah, that, 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 there is definitely like that. It's, it's like, you know, they're having this big party when there's this outbreak of the Red Death, which is the disease. So, and the... Although... Yes? It can easily be interpreted as an incredibly modern story now, of like all the um, outbreak that's gone on in the world. It could be represented as someone snuck in that had the disease, and that's what got them all killed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And actually, now that I think about it, this I might be mixing this. I said that I read this in high school, but I think I'm mixing it up with another Poe story that's very similar, uh, which also has characters like holed up uh, in a disease. But it's very, but it's different because it ends with one of the guys who is dead and be kept in a separate room, getting like possessed by uh, uh, the embodiment of some like evil creature. Uh, so I might have I might have mixed it up with this, but yeah. So. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so the what disease the Red Death is supposed to represent? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a bleeding disease. So actually, I, the first thing that comes to mind for me is like Ebola or something like that, because you know that's what. Something like that. I was, I was thinking that or like the plague. Well, yeah, but you know you have to remember that in the olden days they called a lot of things the plague. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't just the plague, like any like big uh, pandemics. Well, pandemics. What, what's the other? infestations of like a disease like could be interpreted as the death yes so there's there's a lot of theories about like which specific disease so the the most popular theory is that it's supposed to stand in for tb you know t that, that disease that i cannot pronounce how do you pronounce it like, Tuber tuberculosis tuberculosis yeah the one that i can't pronounce correctly anyway so because obviously his wife died of that but like i don't think tuberculosis like makes you bleed uh, I mean, it, it causes like inflammation of the lungs, like very serious, one, serious. And then, uh, no, no, could, yes. Yeah, speaking of like, it could also represent he was having a good time with his life, and it felt like like some stranger being deaf just takes him away from from him. Yeah, exactly. It, it is kind of that. That's kind of like the morality aspect of this. That these guys are having this big party, and while well, there's this huge outbreak outdoors, and it's like it, it's kind of like divine punishment for their. Uh, Mm. indiscretions it's, it, it's kind of it's a very straightforward story like you know like you see and to be honest like that's why i've never really liked it i'm sure there's some like uh symbolism with the colors and everything that's supposed to be uh there as well but uh this one doesn't like have a lot of pomp and circumstance to it it's just like this thing shows up and it kills them it's kind of like you know <laughs> like friday the 13th i guess oh uh, well yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things in the story that mean a lot different today. Well, yeah, yeah, but sure. I, yeah, like I was about to go into that. Like I, I, so because you requested it and because you knew the story, I obviously wanted to do it. But I was a little worried that it might be a bit more boring. But luckily, our reading and especially like your sound effects made this a lot funnier. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah, as I said, I, I read a bit of an abridged version that got, you know, right to the point a little bit more quickly. Like, there was a lot of partying in the full unabridged version, wasn't there? A lot of partying. Yeah, exactly. So there it has this masquerade. And that's the other thing. Like, so it's called the Mask of Red Death, but there, I should probably point out that the the word mask in this is written as M-A-S-Q-U-E. Uh -huh, I've noticed that clever pun there. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it is a pun. I think it's just that's just how you wrote mask in the early 1800s before it got changed to M A S K because yeah. that 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 tends to happen with language over time and you know it's obviously well now well now it's an unintentional pun because it could yeah. be mask as in mask or the mask of red diff as it ends up becoming death's party. You know what? It's also really funny. I didn't stop to comment on it, but while I was reading it, and now I'm freaking lost the paint <laughs> my paint place. So there were a couple of words that were in like italics. And had like weird, uh, you know, uh, hyphens uh, and stuff on them. But they, but they're just like English words now. I guess they were not common words uh, when this story was published. So that's why they are in italics. Uh, let me see if I can. Well, yeah. The, the, well, there was decora. That's obviously not English modern, but it that just means like uh, decorations. Because he, he decor. Well, no, he disregarded the decora of mere fashion. So that's. Um, well, I guess it could mean decorum as well. And when he says... Not decorum, uh, just decor. Yeah, and also in that... Uh, yes, in the part where it said he had directed in great part a movable embellishment uh, of the seven chambers upon occasion of his great feet. But feet is actually spelled F-E-T-E -E, and with uh, E having that little... Uh, like fate? Uh, no. I, I th feet. Fe like, I think it is French because the second E... I mean, the first E has that uh, chevron... Uh, a sign on top of it. Um, so, so I don't know. 
occasion of it, of this great feat. So, and I do think it means like feat, as in like as you're doing something and you've accomplished something. Mm. Yeah. And bizarre was actually written in italics. I guess bizarre wasn't very well known in those days either. It was kind of an must have been a very bizarre word to use back then. Yeah, exactly. Nowadays, of course, like you can't say. <laughs> You can't talk about both stories without bringing up the morbid and the bizarre. So you know mm. it's 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 like very much more common. And the well, then there are like some weird ones. Like there's blood has been hyphenated, but blood isn't like obviously. I guess that's just for dramatic effect. But roll. Famous, oh well, yeah. Famous meant to be pronounced as blood. Yeah. So in the thing, there's a lot of like side notes, like in uh, uh in 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 um uh. uh, uh, uh Oh, God, I forgot what these are called. But anyway, so in the part where it says when the eyes of Prince Prospero fell upon the spectral image, it then goes to a side note, which with the slow and solemn movement if is if more fully to sustain its role. Again, role is in italics, and the O in role also has that chevron over it. So, you know... Um, role A. <laughs> role A. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think. I, it, I think he is like. Uh, for some reason, Poe was. We, we mentioned this before uh, that in other stories, this one didn't have it like that badly. But in some of those other stories, Poe would have like you know random, either Latin phrases or French phrases. Yeah, yeah. like our murders in the Rue Morgue being a strong example. Well, yeah, but that's that one is set in Paris, so that, yeah. that makes sense. <laughs> but in Ber, Be, yeah, in Benares, no, Barony, sorry, I got it wrong again. <laughs> Berenice, you know, had it had like long sections that were in just Latin. I mean, we we spent. I actually, it's not in the compilation in the discussion part, but I, I'll urge you to go back and listen to our podcast number two because at the end of the story, we actually went through the trouble of trying to translate those, and I don't think we were any wiser for having done so. Like, we kind of figured out what the sentences m meant. But ultimately, they they didn't like you know they weren't like that uh, illuminating I guess you could say. <laughs> uh, was there another one? Yeah, but that's that's so so I don't know that maybe those were just weird. And I always forget like just how suddenly like it surprised me when I was suddenly like on the final page like oh oh that's just the end of the story then huh? <laughs> yeah, but you know you know I I think our reading that's, of that that seems that seems to be a go to with Poe is um just ends up and they were dead. Well, yeah, and, you know, Poe wrote... The reason Poe wrote a lot of short stories were because he obviously uh, would have to write them very quickly because, you know, he had to mm -hmm. get paid. And a lot of these were, like, you know, posted in, like, newspapers and things and pub other publications. So that's that's how he made money. And that's why he didn't... Um, that's why he didn't re re write a lot of novels because that would have taken a lot of time uh, because... Uh, and, and, you know... Uh, he, he didn't have a lot of money, so he had to make money real quick a lot of the time. So that's that's the that was the struggle, that was the struggle of being a you know an author back in those days. Like I was about to say, nice to see that the entertainment business hasn't changed. <laughs> yeah, no, that, but uh, but it's kind of sad because I think I guess the big problem here is like Poe didn't have I, I don't know maybe he had a clark clarking job like that's usually what it was, but it, you know in those days. Whereas these say like an office job like that pays, I think, a decent wage. Like in those days, it was like nothing. It was like like H.P. Lovecraft, the same thing. And he didn't even like do his clerking job very well. So that was the other reason why he was always out of money. Yes, but uh, that was The Mask of Red Death. Um, do you have any more things you want to add there at the end? No, not really. We've uh, covered most of the things we want to talk about. Yes, and... You know, we we still we still have quite a lot of like very famous post stories. Uh, the ones mm -hmm. that I'm still like uh, looking forward to that we should probably do at some point are definitely the Black Cat or the Gold Bug. But then it's going to be another slightly longer episode if we do either one of those. Pit and the Pendulum might be one that we could do another like a shorter one at some point. So we should probably look into that at some point as well. Um, mm -hmm. But if, if if you don't want to add anything else to the end here. Then I suppose that is the end of this podcast. Thank you for listening. I'm Hanno Dandemakinen. See you on the next one. Bye bye. Later.